Tyler Cornett here with Rivers Edge Outfitters in Cherokee, North Carolina. Um, today I'm going to be tying for you a uh, what we call a sexy waltz worm. So it's a pretty, pretty um, go-to pattern for me anyways. Uh, it's another pattern I use on um, stock streams and on wild fish as well and then they, they love it. So. So one of the good things about this pattern is, is that it's so, it's simple. There's not many materials involved. There's actually only two materials involved. And you can also, you can change these materials up and get whatever you know, combination you want. Which is always, always good. You can get really creative with this. So I just wrapped in the sulky. This is the silver metallic sulky. Seems to be a really good ribbing for this fly. This is Hairline's uh, Hair's Hair Dubbing. You want to put it on there, just make you a slender noodle. I like to, you know, I'd like to start off small and if I need more dubbing I can always put on more. But it's harder to take dubbing off than it is to put on. So. And just begin wrapping up the hook. So you want to make this a little bit more slender in the back and make it thicker as you get towards the beat of the fly. Then once you get to the bead, you can take your sulky and start wrapping it over your dubbing. Once you get up to the top and you get done reaming, you can wrap it in. Then what I like to do is I like to put a hot spot on mine. So to do hot spots, the best way to do it is just do three or four whip finishes on top of each other. for good measure. Just make sure that hot spot's really visible. And then that's it. And also, once you clip your thread off, you can kind of give it a haircut here. Just trim some of these longer hairs off. Uh, like I said before, it's one of my go-to patterns, so give it a shot. Yeah, and you guys, you can come by the shop, and um, we have all these materials here that you need to tie this fly, so give it a shot.